And we're on to the Awashi High School Culture Festival number two. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with Toradora episode 12. Last episode, Taiga's father came back into her life, or at least attempted to. And upon Ryuji's advice, Taiga's talking to him, and we're developing some sort of open dialogue and communication, at least, you know. I don't know where that's gonna go, but we all we have that mixed in with this festival that's coming up. We just have a lot of emotions swirling in the air, so that's gonna be crazy. And this episode should be crazy. I'm expecting it, you know, just like the next episode, the finale of this whole culture festival arc, as you would say. But remember, guys, with certain shows like Toradora, I can't put the reaction on YouTube. So click that link in the description. Click that reaction. Come back here for the review. If you guys want early access or full length to this show and all the other shows I'm watching, also want to support me, consider checking out that Patreon down below. I appreciate it. If Patreon's not really your thing, but you still want to support me, consider leaving a like and maybe leaving a nice comment down below. It means more than you guys really know. It really does. Also, follow me on Twitch and on Twitter for my gaming streams and my updates. I appreciate y'all. Let's hop into this Toradora episode 12. So like I said, coming from Ryuji's point of view, not knowing my own personal father, if I didn't have my stepfather in my life, I think I'd be even more inclined towards Ryuji's point of view where he's like, guys, why are you talking shit on this man who's just trying to get back into his daughter's life? But he is he's only seeing it from that point of view. He's not open to any other perspective, whereas Taiga... Mino, I don't know what Minorine's perspective, because she knows a lot more about Taiga than anyone else. I don't know her perspective. I want her to talk more and give us some context as to what she knows, because that would open the doors a lot, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm low-key a little upset that she didn't talk a little more. Because she, especially with the fact that we've already pre... Maybe, maybe that wasn't the best situation to talk, because, you know, we're causing a scene in front of everyone. It shouldn't be what we talk about in front of other people, but knowing that uh kushieda doesn't really open up to people but has opened up previously to ryuji i would assume she'd be like no let's go talk over there let's talk about this i'll tell you why he's a douche and then maybe ryuji not only because he likes her but is a very open and, and understanding guy would be like oh, okay maybe he's an asshole because everyone's perspective i i don't count kushieda because she knows something about him that i don't but taiga's like i don't need him in my life come on like we got to take her her perspective first off as number one priority because she's the one who knows best in this situation but even when it comes i forget i forget our mom's name but even when it comes to mom she's like isn't that guy a little selfish like he just he hasn't been here for god knows how long and then just waltzes back starts selling furniture starts like doing all this just that and the other when like you know like i i you know i see it from all perspectives thankfully because i've experienced something similar like this in my life but i think with what's going on in this episode in terms of him not showing up and maybe next episode with being the last episode of this arc showing us some more as to why he's a douche and an asshole i think ryuji is definitely going to need to apologize to minarin and even to taiga at that because you know he's been but like I, I would also understand it if they apologized to him, too. I mean, I don't really... Okay, okay. In totality, he definitely deserves... He definitely needs to apologize. He pushed the limits. But he didn't know he pushed the limits due to his background of his own family life. So I, I would like him to apologize, but I'd also like them to just say it's okay. Truly, no need to apologize. You know, like, I just want there to be a level of understanding between our characters. Because at the age they're at right now a lot of hormones are raging a lot of emotions are in the air so it's just like you know I, I get it i really do i truly understand and uh i gotta say that play though was hilarious i did not talk about that at all that play was goddamn hilarious and shout out to them like i think of it as like my hero like my hero really showed us the concert which was really cool but in terms of everything else they showed us kind of like a sneak glimpse which i guess is very similar to this festival which they showed us a good amount of the of the actual wrestling show but then there's like sneak peeks at the maid cafe the crepe thing which is my hero had crepes too i need what's up with school festivals in japan having crepes 
I haven't had a crepe in goddamn years. I want a crepe. I want a. We never. The closest thing we had to school festivals at my school was summer day, which was like on one of the last days of school. We literally just didn't have class and we just like played games or stuff, stuff like that for the entirety of the day, which I always skip that day because fuck going to school if I'm not going to be doing schoolwork. But like we never had crepes or shows or put in effort. Like imagine I was in stagecraft one time where I actually put in a valiant effort. I built a lot of the sets or I helped build a lot of the sets in terms of the play and stuff like that. But I was so I was so not into drama or actually acting that I was not inspired or passionate about it whatsoever. I was just like, wow, this is cool. I'm spending a class period doing this other shit, you know, building, going to grab materials, stuff like that versus actually doing classwork. But I feel like if it was something like this, where they got to choose the concept they wanted to do, they got to vote, they were, it was something they decided as a class, you know, they were passionate about. I feel like they could get into it so much more. And you know, I wish I had that at my school because that's fucking awesome. But with that being said, I'm going to end this episode right here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is a fantastic show. Like always, I'll catch you guys on the flip. Thank you, Dapper Squad. Peace out.